to another Journey to the Past movie review. Today I will be reviewing The Firm. The Firm is a 1993 American legal thriller film directed by Sidney Pollock with a screenplay by David Rabe, Robert Town, and David Rayfield, based on the 1991 novel The Firm by John Grisham. The film follows a young lawyer who joins a prestigious law firm only to discover that it has a sinister dark side. The novels of John Grisham have produced a great deal of material over the years, with many of his works being adapted into films. His ability to craft stories in a thriller genre that are full of intrigue demonstrate a great level of intelligence, and this intelligence is reflected in the stories and characters he creates. When it comes to film adaptions of his novels, they do tend to echo the intelligence of the stories they are replicating, which as a viewer is very pleasing. There is a story with a clear beginning, middle and end, leaving no room for asking, how did we get here? Each moment does work into all the moments to follow, so there is definitely a good rhythm. We have a great cast led by Tom Cruise who excels at playing the smart, eager young man desperate to prove something to himself and others. So much though that he gets himself into a situation he doesn't realise is a situation until it's too late. As they say, if something seems too good to be true, then it probably is. Tom Cruise is this entire film. We are watching him maneuver his way through several different conflicting issues, from his work to his marriage to his family, the government, and then just the issues of himself. Altogether, it does create that intrigue, and the best part is we watch him snap into gear and proceed to handle the entire situation in a very calculated and methodical way, which really makes the character's intelligence shine. I feel the plot itself is very involved, perhaps has a bit too much going on and sometimes isn't as clear cut as I would have liked it to be. The film is unnecessarily long, two and a half hours just seems pointless when most of that is focused on obvious and overdone setup and about 20 to 30 minutes of Tom Cruise running from bad guys. I really believe it's been worked into every contract he's had for the past 20 years that he is obligated to run from bad guys. I wish the runtime had been cut down or that more of that time was dedicated to better plot development. I felt everything involving Gene Hackman's character was misplaced and used to fill time that didn't need to be filled. I was never given a legitimate reason for the character to be there or to be doing most of what he did. He just seemed like a means to an end, but much of that means before the end just came off as redundant. Some aspects of the film, such as Cruz's character having a one-night affair, felt incredibly forced even though we later find out he was being set up. You establish this character who is so loyal to his wife that the moment a woman hits on him he backs away from the situation, but then not 10 minutes later you throw a damsel in distress at him who very uncharacteristically and very actively makes him feel her up and suddenly he's incapable of saying no. That boggles the mind. Does he have a weakness for women in distress? And if so, what woman gets roughed up and then asks a stranger to have sex with her? This entire scene just aggravated me. It was far too convenient and just didn't feel natural whatsoever. The end of the film comes off as anticlimactic. For two hours, the film feels as though it's building up to something, that all the events thus far will culminate in the ultimate confrontation, and instead you get a sweaty Tom Cruise in a business meeting giving a brief but compelling speech and then it's all over. All that work, all that investigating, and spy work, and FBI agents, and murders, and it all led to that? A brief meeting! I genuinely felt as though I had invested far too much time in a movie that did not give enough back. I also felt like the characters had invested a lot of time to not get enough out of their own story. That's incredibly disappointing, but nowhere near as disappointing as the music. Perhaps wrong is a better word, because the music in this film was all wrong for it. The music, which was composed by Dave Grusin, would have been far more suited to a comedy drama film. Every time I heard the score, I thought I was watching Father of the Bride. It did not fit the tone, it was too upbeat, and just did not sync up with the intention of the film at all. It was honestly quite uncomfortable to listen to. This film is still a really good adaption. It has very elaborate plot that is performed fantastically by a team of very well selected actors. And while there are still issues that prevent me from perceiving it as a terrific film, I did still enjoy watching it, though I'm not sure it's one I'd pick up and watch for a second viewing. I think you get enough out of it on the first watch and it's not particularly worth a second one. I appreciate you coming here and taking your time to watch this. You should do it again soon. Hint, hint. Until next time. Bye.